阿清 Cable Two。Pledge of Allegiance, followed by an invocation. If you will all please rise. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic. Father, we thank you for this beautiful day that you have given us, and we are excited to be back here after a month off. Lord, we thank you for each person who was here tonight, and we want to lift up as we are almost ready to begin a new school year, all of our staff and our students and their family. And Lord, we just ask that you give us a, a good year this year for all of our students. Lord, thank you again for such a loving and supportive community who believes in education and who believes that everyone has the right for a, the best education that we can give. And so, Lord, we, we thank you for um, our community and our partners, and we thank you for the resources that we have here in Forsyth County that we take for granted. Lord, thank you for each member of this board and for their heart and their love that they have for the community at which they serve. Thank you for all of our blessings, and may we say and speak love this evening as we assemble for the good of all. Amen. All right. Okay, so we're starting to feel a little rusty. It's been like a month off. Um, <laughs> So tonight, um, board, we have um, a, a, an adi one addition to our uh, agenda that came up at our finance committee meeting. And so under, um, I would like to you to consider amending the agenda and adding action item E, which, be, which would be to adopt policy 4141. Do I have a motion to amend the agenda? Thank you, Mr. Singletary, second. Mr. Johnson, all in favor? Thank you very much. So we have some special recognitions this evening, and at this time I will um, call on Robin Shaw from the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society Community Partnership. And I'm, I'm not sure, Jackie, but some, some of our monitors are just flashing, so I we can probably look at just the screen board members. I'm sure it'll be at the same place. So I may have to read a little bit more than I thought because the PowerPoint's not up. My name is Robin Shaw. I am delighted to be with you tonight. Um, Ms. Caldwell Jones, Dr. Amory, school board, thank you so much for allowing me to come and speak to you. Um, the Leukemia Lymphoma Society is the world's largest voluntary health organization dedicated to the cure of blood cancer and treatment of those who have it. That may not seem important to you until I share with you that every three minutes in this country someone is diagnosed with a blood cancer, leukemia, lymphoma, and myeloma. This is urgent. We are relentless. We are going to find a cure. We work hard every day to improve the lives of patients. 
Now you're probably wondering what that has to do with Winston-Salem Forsyth County Schools. Well, tonight I'm here to celebrate your school system because you have been a partner with us for over 15 years in a service and leadership project called Pennies for Patients. Pennies for Patients connects your participating schools with local patients. It encourages students toward career and college readiness by helping them to learn STEM concepts about becoming researchers and scientists in our world. And it empowers students to impact the lives of other people and see how they make a difference in the lives of others. How does that look here at Winston-Salem for Scythe County Schools? It's pretty incredible and we're very grateful. Over the last 15 years, we've had schools in Forsyth County participate with us in Pennies for Patients. Last year, 2017-18, the year just passed, we had 16 schools in your district that participated who raised, get ready, $27,772, one penny at a time. Wow. One penny at a time. <laughs> so you wanna get bigger? Over the last 15 years, we've had 49 schools from your district to join us over these years and hold on to something. They've raised $244,885 in your district. So I wanna give, give you a hand for that. And thank you for that. Because of your school families here in Forsyth County, more cancer patients are surviving every day. Our partnership with you allows us to give back to your schools. We have an opportunity for schools that do pennies for patients to earn Amazon and Target gift cards. We have an Olive Garden luncheon for the top class at every school and we've seen many of your students take a bus trip to Olive Garden to celebrate their generosity. We also give a STEM curriculum to every elementary and middle school to use in their classroom because we want your students to think of this as science and technology and engineering, mastering these skills because they're gonna be part of a cure, they're gonna help us to make sure that cancer no longer threatens anyone. Together, we're gonna outsmart cancer. So as partners in your district, we want your students to experience the creativity, the curiosity that's part of STEM learning. We also want them to know they are part of a bigger community. They are making a difference in the lives of many kids who are fighting leukemia and lymphoma. So, Winston-Salem for Scythe County School Board, Dr. Emery, and members of the community, we wanna thank you for this partnership. We wanna present you tonight with a community partnership award because community is what matters. Your community pulls together to support your students, but I want you to know your students and staffs and admin teams are out there pulling together to make it possible for kids with leukemia to get well and for us to find a cure. There is one, and we're gonna find it. So I wanna tell you that this year we already have 15 schools in your district signed up for Pennies for Patients. If you're out there, I hope you'll encourage all of your students and staffs to join us. We'd love to be in every school. I will come and help them and make it the best experience ever. But most of all, I want you to know that your students are empowered and engaged to be members of our community and they are incredible members of yours. Thank you so much for letting us be partners with you. We hope to be with you for many years and I'd like you to have this on behalf of all those great kids who one penny at a time are making a difference. Thank you, Thank Thank you, you so much. much. Thank you for having me. We wanna give you on behalf of our board just for how you, you know, the program and, and the opportunities that you're giving for our students. So thank you very much, we really appreciate Thank it. Thank you for having me. Thank yes. you all so much. I, I wanted Martin. to say something, Robin. Yes. Um, I am a chronic myeloid leukemia patient, and Gleevec is why I am here and alive, and the original research was all paid for by the Leukemia Lymphoma Society, right. and so I'm sitting here grateful to LLS because I get to be here. Thank you. Thank you. For those of you who don't know, Gleevec is a pill that controls blood cancer. And it took about 15 years and about $40 million to, to make it happen. So those pennies are going to make a difference. Thank you for sharing. Thank you. Thank you.
percent of this. All right. Steve. You sure? What, what board members, what, what you should have the link on, you should be able to see the presentation so you can, if your monitor's flashing, you should be able to turn it off and see it on the iPad. Okay. Okay. Um, so thank you, Chairwoman Jones, uh, ladies and gentlemen of the board, um, Superintendent Emery. Um, the next part of the agenda, as you can see, is uh, special recognitions for the Hispanic League. Um, you know I'm not part of the Hispanic League. I work to serve our English learner population. However, I wanted to take a few moments to introduce uh, the Hispanic League, and they can share some of the wonderful things they are doing for our English learner population. Um, in my position over uh, working with this population in Winston-Salem for Side County Schools for the last 15 years, I've seen some of the wonderful opportunities um, and the endeavors that the Hispanic League is undertaking to serve our students. And so to that end, I would like to introduce Mary Jo Turner, the Executive Director of the Hispanic League, and Heidi Noriega, uh, the Education Committee Chairperson and a representative from Haynes Brand. So thank you, ladies, for being here. Good evening, Chairman Jones, ladies and gentlemen of the board, and of course, Dr. Emery. The Hispanic League's mission has, is to enrich, the, excuse me, improve the lives of Hispanic Latinos through promoting community inclusion, education, health, and multicultural understanding. And we've been a 501c3 since 1992, helping to change those lives. We are honored to work with the Hispanic Latino community, which represents 22 different countries here and is approximately 15 to 17 percent of Forsyth County's population. Several partners that we have in the community are represented on, well, it's not showing up there, are represented on the um, screen. And what I wanted to do is just highlight a few of them that are really making a huge difference in our community with us. The Arts Council of Vincent Salem, Forsyth County, the Bookmarks, Crosby Scholars, Forsyth Promise, which is the Cradle to Career Initiative, um, the International Center at Forsyth Tech, and the YMCA um, Latino Achievers Program. One of the things I want to share most, though, is the partnership that we have had with the Winston-Salem Forsyth County Schools. Fiesta has been around since 1992, and one of the things that's amazing about that is that we have students who come from um, Smith Farm, Ashley and Spee's elementary schools to perform on the children's area stage. We had Ready Freddy there for um, performing and being a part of that wonderful opportunity. We had the school bus there so parents can come on board and learn about what they need to know about starting and having their children in school. David has been an amazing part of that because he's helped to organize the children's area for at least 10 years, probably longer. <laughs> And also when we bring Fiesta musicians, they come not only for that one day of the festival, but we bring them ahead of time so they can come into the schools and perform and give master classes. Um, we've had Cubanana last year from Florida. We have um, Las Planeras de los 21 from New York City. We had Sundays in Mexico from Chicago. So we're bringing musicians that are from outside the area. who are bringing a unique um, performance to our students. For over 20 years now, we've had our Middle School Achievers program. Um, Heidi is going to share more information with you about that. But over $7.2,000 a year are going to those students through incentives. This year, for the first time, we did a Teacher of the Year Award. Um, our wonderful doc, uh, Joy Ham at Walkertown <laughs> um, Middle School received that. And we also had an Eighth Grade Essay Award. Those were both presented at our Spanish Night Gala. And when we had the Spanish Night Gala, what's fabulous about that is we're giving scholarships to our students to go to college. This year, we were able to give 42 scholarships to Hispanic Latino students to go to college. And so far, since the year 2000, we've given 411 scholarships, valued at $936,000. So that means next year, we'll be going over the million dollar mark, which is pretty amazing. This year, also for the first time, we gave two Praxis Scholarship Awards to teachers so they could continue their education. With the annual Bookmarks Festival, we bring a Hispanic author to the town, and they are able to go back into the schools, meet with the students, and be a part of that. And for the first time this year, we partnered with Parkland High School and the Winston-Salem Foundation's Youth Grantmakers Fund 
to help some of our middle school achievers go to Wake Forest University for a visit. Now, as Heidi tells you more in-depth information about the middle school achievers, I'd like to kind of let you think a little bit about ways we can partner in the, in the future and look at other potential. One way is to expand that middle school achievers program. We have a mentoring program that we started at Kernersville Middle School. I'd also like to explore the possibility of doing a memorandum of understanding to enhance transportation opportunities for us. So we take students for university visits or educational vi uh, field trips, they can have that opportunity. Also, if there's a way to better confirm the progress of our students with the research and evaluation department. And also, as we continue to channel the students that are going to uh, the Crosby Scholars Program and the Latin Achievers Program, just continue that relationship. So thank you so much for this partnership that we have with each of you and all the people in the audience, because it's really a community that makes this happen. At this time, let me have share, um, go ahead and move more information forward so that you can tell more about Middle School Achievers. Good evening, everyone. Chairwoman Jones, uh, ladies and gentlemen of the board, and Dr. Emery, thank you so much for allowing us to speak tonight and share with you a little bit about the educational opportunities that we have been providing to the youth of Forsyth County um, and partnership that we've had with Forsyth County Schools for the past 20 years. As um, Mary Jo mentioned, um, we have an umbrella that mission of the Hispanic League is very focused on education. And we have an umbrella of education from middle school, partnerships through high school, all the way through college. We are providing our Middle School Achievers program um, to 600, over 600 students in nine out of the 15 Forsyth County Middle Schools. Um, in this program, we have over 92 languages that are spoken. In high school, we partner with the YMCA's Latino Achievers program. And then in college, as Mary Jo alluded to, we are reaching the $1 million mark for scholarships. Um, in, to force the county students. So we're very excited about that. 42 students were awarded scholarships in 2018. 35 colleges are what they're attending. And over 200, or exactly 236 students have received awards in the history of this program. We wanted to share with you a little bit about our model for middle school achievers. We are targeting skill building for a very vulnerable group of students. These students come into the country and they don't necessarily have the background and understanding of what the school system's like in the United States. Um, some of them are, um, are second generation, but yet they need some help with their English language skills. And so we are providing that vulnerable group of students with different skill building opportunities to set them up for success. Academic and soft skills, goal aspiration, awareness of opportunities post middle school, what is the high school like? What are the different opportunities that are available to them for extracurricular activities, scholarships, et cetera? What is college? What are the different opportunities for a post-secondary education? And lastly, providing them incentives and motivation for success. And then within that Middle School Achievers program, we are then targeting and we have created a new pilot mentoring program that we launched two years ago at Kernersville Middle School, um, where we take at-risk students that have been identified in partnership with our teachers um, to then mentor them and provide them with information and opportunities and one-on-one -on -one relationship building uh, to really focus on their success. We are expanding that middle school mentoring program into Northwest Middle through a partnership with Wake Forest University and a um, mentoring program that is founded in data. Um, that so we're expanding this year and our plan is to use that partnership with the middle schools that we've already established and grow the mentoring program. So a few highlights of the middle school achievers program just to end on a, on a couple different things. Uh, again we're in nine middle schools, we're in Clemens, East Forsyth, Wiley, Kernersville, Mineral Springs, Northwest, Philo Hill, Southwest and Walkertown. We started an essay writing program for eighth grade students um, focused on a quote for the year. Last year was, do not let fear stop you from achieving what you want. This was the first year that we presented the awards and a $200 um, award to the student who won the essay um, at, our, at our annual gala. 
and it gives students an opportunity to practice their English language skills as well as essay writing, which is key for college applications and scholarships. And then lastly, the program focuses on seven areas of student improvement, academics, attendance, punctuality, effort, behavior, class particip participation, and English profici proficiency. So with that, thank you so much for allowing us to share with you this evening. Uh, we look forward to continuing this partnership and making it even stronger. Thank you. Can I, can I ask a question? How did you choose which middle schools to partner more intensely with? We're looking, um, we just did an evaluation of our middle schools. We're in seven of the 15. Um, and one of the things that we're looking at right now is the population of Hispanic Latinos in looking at census data uh, around that. Over the years, the partnership, it depends on, um, like for example, the reason we started in Kernersville was the relationship was very strong. So it was an entry point for it to be able to use our skill set and, and build on a really strong relationship. Northwest is one where we already had uh, Wake Forest University had um, a program in the elementary school, so it was good for them to then continue on into the middle school to build on that. And then the way we're looking at expanding, for example, Mineral Springs, high Latino Hispanic population, we're coping with the partnership with uh, Wake Forest and then other universities as we grow to then expand into particular schools with the mentoring program. Okay, so you're looking for where the partners are. Yes. Okay. On behalf of the board, we want to thank you for the strong partnership and for all the help that you are giving to our students and, and opportunities and also to, to staff. So thank you very much thank you for so working much. with us. We appreciate thank it. Thank you so much. Good to see appreciate it. Time to see you do a better well. Good. Thank you. So board members, we have a, a big group coming up, and you know that um, this summer we had our summer meals program, so we're gonna let Lauren and Amanda recognize some, some people that made that very successful this summer. Good evening, Chairman Jones, Dr. Emery, members of the board. Thank you for having us this evening. I do have a large group with me this evening. As you know, this is not our entire group. We are 550 strong. In the summer months, we don't have quite as many sites open. Um, historically, we've opened 15 or um, to about 20, 25 sites um, throughout the county using our schools. And this year, we decided to expand those efforts by taking meals on the road out into our community. We use six different vehicles um, and we service 24 different sites. And so the team that I have with me this evening, they all stepped up to the plate and said that they wanted to be a part of this. I was a little worried that we weren't going to have enough staff with all of these additional sites but they all stepped up to the plate. Um, I have so many stories that I hope to be able to share with you all throughout the course of this next year of the tremendous efforts, pictures of them with the students and the families um, out on the road. And so I just wanted to take a minute and share a couple stats with you. We'll come back later on and do an entire um, update on the child nutrition program. But last summer, uh, the summer of 2017, we served 55,223 meals over the summer. That was 32 days of service. For that same number this summer, we served 73,936. And so mobile meals alone, um, out in our communities, we serve 28,787 meals. Um, and that's an average of about 710 additional meals a day. Um, it was up and down with the weather and different things, but each one of these members showed up, um, rain or shine, um, out in the heat, heat index days, um, unloading and reloading to all of these different sites, driving through complexes, reaching out to families, knocking on doors to grab every child they possibly could to come out and get a free meal. And so I just wanted to take a few minutes and tell them thank you and um, recognize them for those tremendous efforts. Um, so this evening, Amanda has our awards. And so we have Antrovet Bailey, um, Tracy Cobbler, Latrice Davis, Lisa Fennell, Tracy Fulp, Paul Hart, Katina Heath, Alicia Hopes, Maisha Hudgens, Rhonda Johnson, Connie Larson, Tina Leak, Lynette Montgomery, Calvin Moore, Tony Moser, LaShonda Pate, 
Crystal Penn, Carrie Riddick, Shandy Rodriguez, Catherine Sigmund, Kathy Taylor, Mary Watson, Cassetta Williams, and Kalua Wilder. And not everyone could join us this evening. I'll stay up here for just one moment longer. I have two additional folks that I want to recognize. Um, as all of you know, any initiative that we do in the school system takes a lot of planning. And so when I went back to my office team and it took us time to say, hey, we're going to serve all these sites and we've got to get all these vehicles ready to go and figure out how we're going to transport meals, my staff looked at me like I was a little crazy because it's a lot of work. But I had two individuals um, that were slated with this task. And they did a lot of planning starting all the way back in January um, to work with the community, to find complexes that welcomed us into their communities to service their students, um, working with the D with DPI to get everything set up, running census data, um, all of the logistical things behind the scenes. And so I want to just say thank you so much to these two ladies, because we could not have done this without them. Erica Bird and Deborah Stewart. Thank you all, and thank you board members for coming out to the sites um, to see all the hard work that these folks did. Um, Antrovet, if you will turn around and... Yeah, you'll take a couple steps forward, come back, and we want to shake your hand. <laughs> thank you so much for what you did. Thank you so much for what you did. Thank you so much. Thank you. You're wonderful. Thank you. You're a hero. Thank you. It meant so much. I went and saw those little kids right here. Best thing, best thing that's happened. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. It, it was wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You're a hero. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, Lauren. You really, really are. I mean, I went out there, and it's the best thing that I've seen. I wish you'd stood up there, because I wanted to say something. pleasure of going out one day to see what these ladies did and I'm going to tell you we've done a lot of things in our school and we've done a lot of good things but to see a hungry child come out with their parents and pick up their little hamburger and their little cup of broccoli and their little carrot sticks and their chocolate chip cookies because of these ladies I can't begin to tell you what, what it, it did to my heart and what it would do to your heart, too. They are heroes, and I want to say thank you. Thank you to all of them, and thank you to our school system for being able to have a program like this. Thanks. Thank you. That concludes our special recognitions for the evening. And we will next move to public comments on agenda items. So those are um, agenda items for the 630 meeting. Those can be lit, found under action or discussion items on the agenda. I have two speakers signed up this evening. First, Rhonda Mays. Good evening, Chairwoman Jones, the board, and Dr. Emery. I am Rhonda Mays. I'm a school social worker here in the district, and I have the pleasure of serving as full-time release president of Forsyth County Association of Educators. Tonight, I would like to speak about the uh, finance report. I want to say, you know, thank you for making certain every effort is made um, to assure that any educator who is to get a increase in their salary from the state will get it as soon as it is possible rather than later, that is good news to hear. 
And you know, thank you for also making certain that you continue to put plans in place to retain as well as attract educators to our district because we know the importance of having that consistency of educators in our district. That will also help with our student progress as well because when we don't have a steady relationship with our students and educators, that negatively impacts how much progress students can make. So thank you for continuing with those plans, as well as plans for seeing what efforts can be made to continue to help us to compete with the surrounding larger districts, that we can attract educators to our district and that they will stay. Please continue to do what is necessary so we can do the work for our students and continue to serve them as best we can and that we continue to instill in them what they need to be good citizens in this United States. Thank you. Thank you. Next, Eunice Campbell. Good evening, board members evening. and Superintendent uh, Emery. As I was looking at the board book for tonight's meeting, one thing that caught my eye was a request for a contract for from the heart for Carver High School, and I noticed that this would be the second year for that contract. I went back to the October 2017 meeting where the first contract was approved. This is a contract in the amount of $60,000. Um, while I hope that the efforts from the from the heart contract was successful one of the things that i noticed from this particular board book was there was no evidence on the outcome from last year's request and it stated in question four of the um, of the request how will you measure and evaluate the effectiveness of the professional development and they said it would participate in pre and post surveys, classroom observations, and academic behavioral data. So my question is, where is that information before you approve another contract for $60,000? Would you not like to see how the outcome was for last year? And I looked on the board book for today, and I don't see now if it was posted somewhere and it and I overlooked it, then please let me know because as a taxpayer who is um, a part of that money that is being used for this program, I, and I'm sure other people would like to see results from these initiatives that are being brought forth for, to the school board. And I know from previous school boards that um, meetings that that is something that has been requested some type of proof in the pudding type thing for the school board so that people can see we spent this amount of money on this program and here are the outcomes. I think that that is something that is would make transparency and accountability uh, is needed and it's something that the school board should find some way to post publicly so that we as taxpaying citizens can see that our money is being spent wisely. It's, uh, they're the effects of it, of these programs. Do they work? Do they not work? Why are we continuing to spend money and have no proof that anything is working? And I know they're using the graduation rate as a, a measurement for um, success, and which I think is not um, quantifiable for one program. So I think that needs to be taken into consideration as well, hanging the graduation rate on one program. Thank you. Thank you. So that concludes our speakers for the uh, from the floor on agenda items, and we'll move into discussion items. Um, first, um, I'll recognize Matt Dixon to talk to us a little bit about CORE Academy. Dr. Emery, Chairman Jones, Board of Education. I'm excited to be here this evening to talk to you about some of the changes we've made to our teacher induction, our new teacher induction program. As Ms. Mays said, you know, we work hard to recruit and retain from the entire state, 
And this is one effort we have in, in, um, that we're able to do that. So the teacher induction program we have used to be called STAY, supporting teachers all year. We've changed that name to be Core Academy to be in line with our core values. We're excited that Judy Jones, a retired principal, is heading up that effort this year as interim since Sydney Conger, who had been in that position, retired August 1st. And Judy brings, um, if you know Judy, a tremendous amount of energy and excitement to the field of education and particularly our new teachers. This year we had over 200 participants at our core academy, which is on average for most years. When they arrived on the first day, it's a three-day program, they arrived to a sidewalk lined by school administrators, central office personnel who had music blaring, we were cheering, and welcoming at, to a welcome that they deserve of rock stars. Um, so that was a change and you could definitely see it on the early morning of some of these new teachers' faces. Uh, but they were excited and it really helped set the tone. Um, part of the team that helped change this and had the vision of this, um, particularly I'd like to thank the instructional superintendent team who had put a lot of work into this, along with Deborah Hartman, Sam Mills. Um, they saw it was time for something different, something new, and part of that is bringing energy to what our new teachers do. So, the first, so as I said, it's a three-day program. The first day was a whole group session, and part of that day was led by Dr. Roseboro going over Getting Better Faster, and, uh, which is a book they're going to receive, and they'll have follow-up sessions throughout the school year. They're developed to meet their schedule. They'll have opportunities to attend various sessions on that training. The afternoon of that first day was with instructional services, going over content and lesson planning. And then the second day, second and third day mirrored each other depending on what level they were. They either attended the collaborative learning conference in the morning and then went to their schools to work in their classrooms in the afternoon, or they came back to the education building and worked with our content specialists from instructional services. So as I said, there'll be follow-up sessions throughout the year with a getting better, getting better faster and teach like a champion. And then we'll also have some makeup sessions throughout the year um, for those who miss those sessions, as well as since we're still in the hiring season, we'll have a makeup session for our core academy. Do you have any questions about the changes or what took place during the core academy last week? Do you still have the mentor program as a part of that? Are they mentored with a with a Season teacher or an experience. So they will teacher. still get a mentor. Mm -hmm. um, the coaching piece has changed to be back directly at the school level, okay. but part of the state requirement is they do have a, a mentor for all beginning teachers in the first three years. So they will still get that mentor teacher. And so their coaches will be within their own school. We're not That's using any retired school person. Depending on the area, there are some thing. content areas and specialties that. They may not have somebody in the building, they'll have to look outside the building, okay. but the hope is to provide someone in the building so it's closer, they can get the support they need much quicker. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. And my schedule allowed me to visit that morning and so it was a very nice, warm welcome for all of the new teachers and you see, Dr. Roseboro's smile back there greeted them all right in the foreway, in the, in the entrance way, so along with everyone else, so it was, it was a nice welcome. Um, next, um, I'll recognize Donna Cannon to talk about our Teacher Leader Academy. Good evening, Dr. Emery, Madam Chair, and esteemed board members. It is my pleasure to speak to you this evening concerning and sharing the Winston-Salem Forsyth County Teacher Academy highlights. Teacher Academy is a program developed by Winston-Salem Forsyth County Schools and funded by the Winston-Salem Foundation and the Winston-Salem Board of Education. $182,000 was allotted for year one and $265,000 was granted for year two. These monies are used to pay stipends to teachers who serve as teacher leaders and for professional development. The final year of the grant, which will be next year, will allot an additional $300,000 and 25 additional teachers. They are the program has three distinctive pathways of support for teachers. They are model classroom, 
quality colleagues, and professional development. There were over 1,400 teachers who met eligibility requirements for year one. That number was whittled down to 40 final candidates in 2017 after a very competitive vetting process. We tweaked our application process this year and added an open policy. Over 300 teachers applied this year. Once again, we use stringent application requirements such as evaluation, principal recommendation, EVA scores, and consecutive years in our district. The number of teacher leaders increased this year to a total of 75 strong. These teachers are an amazing, amazing group of educators. In their own words, they tell us that Teacher Academy has provided them a fresh new passion for their profession. They are energized and excited to start the new year. Our school board has given us an additional 10 teacher leaders this year, and we thank you. They are incredible. This year, we have teacher leaders who represent 21 elementary schools, seven middle schools, and nine high schools. Their subject areas span the content areas and include the arts, CTE, ESL, EC, and pre-K. In 2017, our teacher leaders supported 35 mentees in the Quality Colleagues Pathway, and 15 mentees were supported in the model classroom pathway with 75 elementary school observations, 20 middle school observations, and 12 high school observations. This translates into approximately 3,000 plus students in our district being impacted through our program. Teacher leaders created professional development on classroom management and lesson planning, which was open to all teachers who were interested. These teachers will design a program this year in which teacher leaders are videotaped conducting lessons, sharing classroom management, best practices in school culture, and other topics that our data shows need attention. We will make a video library available to all teachers in our district. To date, we are very proud we have 98 applications from principals who have submitted mentee names for this year's program as of this afternoon. This is an incredible increase in numbers and proves to us that this program was successful last year. Applications are being submitted daily. Our teacher leaders have not only proven themselves in their schools, but in their community as well. We have two district teachers of the year who serve in the academy, and many of our teachers are distinguishing themselves in other ways across the district, in their schools, and community. Our teacher leaders report to us that they have grown tremendously as they have reflected and examined their own practices. We've surveyed principals, mentees, and teacher leaders as to their year one experience. This information guided the planning for this year. We continue to learn from our experience. We're working with our research and accountability department to track data in order for us to measure the success of our program. We are currently working on creating a walkthrough data instrument to serve as a tool in determining if change occurs in key practices over time. As an added bonus, even more teachers are being impacted as mentees go back to their schools and share these new practices. Our teacher leaders receive training for three full days in August and three follow-up days throughout the year are planned on topics which include coaching, building relationships, leadership, developing active listening skills, and cultivating supportive relationships with all stakeholders. Added benefits include high teacher morale, wanting to learn more and more and more, and that's what we keep hearing from our teachers. There's been a self-confidence boost to teacher leaders and mentees. Principals now have a resource in which to help their teachers succeed. Our program has benefited teachers who have visited model classrooms and worked with teacher leaders to fine tune and improve their delivery of instruction. Through our professional development, we have also created a pathway that we can design and deliver differentiated support to our teachers in our schools. 
Our district is very proud of our teachers. We will continue to work hard to grow our academy and keep our best and brightest in the classroom. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Board members, do you have any questions, questions? for Ms. Cannon? At this time? No. Thank you very much, Don. See if it works, right? We um, so Mr. Walker has has a couple of things to, to share with us tonight. First, um, to talk a little bit about our summer maintenance projects. Do we have? Um, won't go into projection mode. It just makes it a, it makes it really difficult for folks to kind of follow along with what we're talking about. We we kind of have it here. But for the wonderful people who have come out to see tonight, um, if we could try to get this to work, it would be nice. I think we can do it. It's a little smaller, but maybe you can get them to work on it, kid. Thank you. Good evening. It's um, good to be with you tonight to give you just a brief overview of some things that took place this summer. Um, let me try to explain that the, 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 this is uh, part of our 10-year capital plan projects. That, there's a couple of 2016 bond projects. I'll separate those for you. But the funding for our capital plan is every two years from our commissioners. So what you're seeing now is part of our 2016 to 18 capital plan. Uh, we are in the process and pretty much done with our 2018 to 2020 plan that we'll be sharing here in the near future as we go back to the commissioners. But for the sake of this is kind of what took place from right after graduation until still going on today. Uh, uh, and these are uh, give you some stats kind of at the end of this. This is pretty brief. Uh, as you can see, there's a lot of different types of projects, uh, heat pumps, um, Lighting, install lighting in parking lots, Clemens Elementary, Kernsville Elementary, you see a mechanical system replacement and controls, kind of a carryover from some work that we had done last summer. Walkertown was a major job. Um, we basically um, replaced roof, lights, uh, heat pumps. Uh, uh, I mean, we basically just opened the building up and started all over. We're finally in the halfway through the cleaning process right now. Uh, finally got the contractor piece kind of completed. So we are still working feverishly trying to get the building ready as teachers come back Thursday. And we will go probably right down to the wire just to be honest with you. Children's Center, we replaced two HVC units and roof on the 1990 building. You know we're in a partnership there, uh, Center for Exceptional Children, so they uh, will reimburse us for those uh, services um, as um, part of our agreement. Uh, Bolton Elementary, we paved um, visitor lots. Uh, take just a second to let people know that I always get a question about uh, student fees and what they pay for. Uh, our, we do not get, um, our student fees basically cover paving for a high school lots, but not a elementary and middle. So we use our capital dollars to invest into paving of our um, elementary and middle school lots. Uh, Ashley Academy, a uh, great deal of work taking place there with our HVAC renovation, um, dehumidification project. Uh, we replaced the lower gym roof and various other improvements. We went ahead and replaced some ceiling tiles, some lights, um, put new carpet in the media center, um, did some a few extra things while we were there. Um, it, um, um, personally, to me, it looks really great uh, right now. Uh, we are kind of in, the, again, the final stages uh, uh, the only thing really left to do is clean the cafeteria area and uh, put the media center back together. We put some new carpet in there, and so we've got to kind of get everything back to the walls. But classrooms always, a little bit of touch-up painting going on, but basically our classrooms and our uh, project, as it was noted, is completed. And we will be opening that up for some visitations at soon. By an elementary, you'll see we replaced the gym roof, uh, as well as the same thing at Cook. 
the old town. We, we replaced the remaining windows. It's kind of a carryover project there. Um, Hall Woodward, we repaired a bus canopy. And just remember, these are projects that were actually planned back in 2010. This is a part of a 10-year plan. So this is stuff that's planned pretty far out um, on some of our historic replacement cycles. We did some work uh, resurfacing lots at, at you see at Petrie, Middle Springs Middle, and Middle Springs Elementary. Same way we had some paving projects at Ward and, and Clemens. Um, again, you can see a list of projects here. I don't know if you want to go through every single one of them. Um, uh, I will let you know that the East Forsyth, the West Forsyth baseball lighting was because uh, those are the last set of wooden pole lights that we have in the district. And we have to have them inspected every year. And actually, the ones at East had failed their inspection. And it was just part of the plan anyway. But these uh, sort of gets us all on a standard for all of our schools as we move forward. Winston Salem Prep was another major project. Um, installed rooftop gas HVAC units, totally redoing the dining room and the kitchen. And I'll just go ahead and tell you now that that, that, that one's going to go down to the day before kids come back probably. I mean, we had to do some major work inside the kitchen area. We, we, we're we not sure yet. I don't want to send hysteria through anybody, but we may have to do some bring in some warm food or do some bag lunches first day or two of school if this doesn't work out. We've got to get some work done. We've got to get some inspections from the health departments and things done. But we'll let you know more about that as we move forward. But I think we I think we will be fine, but um, that, that project is was, was one of the major projects. Um, I, I highlight Atkins baseball and softball lighting because this is the last two fields to be actually lit in the district for athletic venues. Um, so everybody is completed there. It's part of the 2016 project, the Glen High School um, kind of design work is now taking place. The Mount Tabor Stadium is completed. We had an event there last Friday night um, and uh, everything is going really well. You also see some other work at Mount Tabor that was playing around resurfacing the lot, uh, lot behind the cafeteria as well as some tennis courts. A lot of infrastructure type work at North Forsyth High School as you see there. Um, in the Reynolds High School, we redid the pavement and driveway around the auditorium area. It's you know, a widely used location um, throughout the year. Uh, and we also did some paving down closer to the soccer field at West Forsyth to kind of increase the capacity of parking there. Um, a lot of roof projects. You can see there Southwest Elementary, went to Salem Prep, Walkertown. Uh, traffic improvements as part of the 2016 bond at Parkland. Uh, the Reynolds Wiley Southeast and Walkertown Elementary is one that we talked about a while back where we put in the new drive sort of down side the campus dumping our traffic back on Darrell Road to get traffic off of Main Street in Walkertown um, so our friends in Walkertown are really happy we finally got it paved this week the rain uh, sort of hit us the last couple weeks finally got that paved and up and running uh, a lot of you see some electrical upgrades and some replacing generators and, and then um, installing mobiles at several of our schools, some capacity issues around us, some seal code of parking lots and some other parking lot repairs. So this summer, since graduation, has been around 55 plus projects, 30 of them are complete, 21 or should be completed by tomorrow, by the end of the day. And we'll have four projects that may roll a little bit into the, the fall. I wanna go back a minute to the Ashley project and if you may recall that I, when I presented that project back in the spring, I said that we may have some work that we have to roll into October. All that work has been completed. So it, when we walk, uh, when the contractor walks out of there this week, uh, all, the, all the work that we had scheduled to do there will be, have been performed. Uh, so just to give you a quick summary of the 2016-18 capital dollars, um, there's been 133 projects listed in there. Um, sort of put the numbers together for you. If you look at the um, last two items, 8.3 and the 121,000, our allocation was around 8.4 million from the commissioners. Of that 8.4, 74% or 6.2 million of that was spent here in Forsyth County or surrounding counties uh, around us. And 1% uh, was out of state and we had a 24% NWE participation. I'll entertain any questions you have. I know there's a little video that our Cable 2 folks put together on some of our projects that we can play. We can watch that and entertain any questions, I guess, if you'd like to. You 
watching Cable 2. June 2018, students leave for the summer as maintenance and construction projects kick into high gear throughout the school system. In an aggressive push to complete a host of projects in just under two months, employees work all summer long to transform buildings and property in time for the new school year. Capital projects begin by gutting the HVAC system at Ashley Elementary. Students and staff will be greeted by more efficient cooling and heating units. It's a complete overhaul of the 30-year-old system with each classroom getting its own unit. Capital projects also include mobile classrooms at Clemens, Spies, and Vienna Elementary, as well as Walkertown High School. At East and West Forsyth, baseball fields were equipped with new light poles, and East gained a new restroom trailer at their stadium. The work continued with gym upgrades at Cook and Clemens Elementary. Electrical services were upgraded at numerous schools. Parking lots and lighting have been improved. Southwest Elementary and Winston-Salem Prep got all new roofs. And it didn't stop there. Projects paid for from the $350 million bond package approved by voters in 2016 are on schedule. Two of the major projects are taking shape as construction accelerates at the Paisley Lowrands campus and the replacement for Con Oak Elementary. Improvements to parking lots and drop-off pickup lanes at Southeast Middle and Parkland High should help traffic flow and reduce backup in the new year. Mount Tabor athletes will be playing in a virtually new stadium that underwent major reconstruction. Old Town and Middle Fork also benefited this summer with window replacements and improvements to pre-K classrooms. And perhaps the most noticeable project to area residents is the reconfiguration of Northwest Boulevard between Reynolds and Wiley. Medians were installed and reverse angle parking spaces added. The improvements to safety and traffic flow should be immediate. It's been a busy summer, but the maintenance and construction teams throughout the school system worked nonstop to bring our infrastructure up to date and in time for the August 27th launch of the new year. I'd like to welcome back the teachers and the students to Forsyth County Schools. Niño, bienvenido todos a la escuela. Woo! Hey, welcome back students. I hope you had a great summer and we'll be glad to see you back this year. Hey everybody, we wanted to send a big welcome back to school for the 2018-19 school year. We hope you're as excited as we are. We've had a great summer getting everything ready and prepared so that you'll return and everything will run smoothly this, this school year. I'd like to welcome everybody back. We sure have missed you. Welcome back teachers and students. Have a great year. Welcome back students. Welcome back everyone. Hope you have a great year. I'd like to welcome all students and staff back. Welcome back, everybody. The maintenance division has been working hard for you this summer. Have a good year. Welcome, welcome back. back. So with that, I'll entertain any questions should you have some. Hey, Daryl, could you um, go ahead and explain for our audience and the public the significance of the percentage on MWBE, please? Yeah, I think it's something that we've kind of really proud of, worked hard on relationships as we build around our community. Um, uh, our goal, the district goal and the state goal for North Carolina is 10%. Um, we, uh, I was telling the, the board members in the buildings and grounds that um, our, our percentages are probably double what they were in the 2016 bond, I mean 2006 bond. So um, we're really proud of that and the, and the ability to, to uh, reinvest uh, back in our local community. That's what this is really all about and providing jobs and opportunities as well. Um, so we have shared that information with our commissioners. Uh, we need to also give them credit on these capital dollars. So without them, this would not be possible. We really didn't have a capital plan until about 2009. 2010 year, so uh, a lot come a long way uh, since that time, and we appreciate the the relationship we have there. But it's really important to be able to reinvest back into our community. And that 24 percent MWBE, basically, what that tells us is that with all of our capital improvement projects, all of our bond projects, that 24 percent of our contractors are either minority owned or minority business women owned. Is that correct? That is correct. Okay. Now, the report you saw at Buildings and Grounds today showed you for our 2016 projects, we're averaging at 31%. So, 
you take these two projects together, they're pretty significant averages. Thank you. Yes, sir. Other questions for Daryl on this particular item? No? Okay, thank you. Okay, Daryl, I think I think you can't go anywhere, yeah. right? We're, we're up next for the um, lease amendment for the WFU. Do you want to introduce or you're good? Where you go? Okay. <laughs> um, uh, you, you had some discussion about extension of a contract with Center for Exceptional Children at your last meeting. The, the agreement in front of you is a lease agreement. A, there's a partnership here with the uh, Center for Exceptional Children at Wake Forest University and the Winton Salem Side County Schools. Um, there's basically, uh, uh, this was actually kind of a 100 year lease in the beginning of this relationship between Center for Exceptional Children and, and Wake Forest. And Sam's here too, has a lot of history uh, on this lease. But basically, what you see in the agreement before you is um, several different amendments to the, to the agreement. Uh, you'll see 1956, 1988, 1991, and the year 2000. A lot of those are kind of expansions of how programs have grown and square footage in the building, just, you know, there, where things have grown and we've taken on more. Um, you also see, if you look down around the, uh, in the whereas column, about the fourth one down um, in 2000, that is kind of when we kind of took on uh, sort of the amendment took place to where we took over a lot of the maintenance facility for the facilities. It actually goes back, but this was kind of shows up in the amendment in the year 2000 uh, that we provide services back in those facilities. Um, so basically this is an expansion uh, or extension, I apologize, for the lease for 25 years as part of the agreement with Wake Forest Center for Exceptional Children and the school system. And um, um, you, you need to know the reason why Wake Forest is involved is at the Children's Center on Rinalda Road, the Center for Exceptional Children owns the facility. They do not own the land. Wake Forest owns the, the land under the building. So that is why they're a big player and a partner in this and uh, what you have before you nights to, to uh, uh, amendment to this current lease. Board members, any questions on that item for Daryl? Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Walker. So next, we'll recognize Principal Carol Montague Davis from Carver High School, um, who will talk to us about the um, From the Heart contract. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening, Chairman Jones, board members, and Dr. Emery. Thank you for providing me with this opportunity to share with you the success of From the Heart program that was with our school this year. Also, I want to say thank you for allowing me to do one of the best jobs that I've ever had is being a high school principal, and especially at Carver High School. <laughs> so thank you for giving me that opportunity. So I'm going to just take a few moments just to share some of the data, and if you want to dig deeper in it, I can give you more of that later, okay? Um, the first thing I want to talk about is how our students were um, selected for this program. Um, we had 50 students from each grade level was in, um, selected to be invited to the program. We wanted to do 25 males and 25 females from each grade level. Um, the way that we selected them, we were using, um, in our data room, we had a, a, a board that had all the ninth graders on the data board, and we would identify their attendance grade and their relationship, so we used some of that data. Then we had, every week we get an early warning system report that talks to us about the attendance and discipline that our students have. And we use that as one of our sources to identify students as well. We also looked at the status of our graduation cohort and we identified some of our seniors who would need another mentor or um, some type of positive other relationship. And we also use our credit recovery as a part because we had a student that needed more than two or three credit recovery courses that needed some encouragement of how to get through, um, through those programs. And we also use teacher recommendation and principal recommendations. So we had a total, we sent out over 200 um, applications and we had a total of 120 students that it was, a, it was a volunteer part, it was not mandatory, that they would volunteer for the program and the parent would sign up for it. So we had 120 students accepted invitations, 
out of the program, um, 84 completed. You would say, where did the rest of the students went? Some of them transferred out, and some of them decided that they might not want to participate in the program. The overall attendance was participation of 70%. And that 70%, I said, was also from the start of the 120. We decided that we would take our attendance, not to inflate the data in any kind of way, that that 70% represented all the students that we invited to the program. And so out of the students that completed the full program, 24% were freshmen, 25% were sophomores, 23% were junior, 27% were seniors. So they kind of show that we kept our balance, which we were looking for about 25% of each grade level. So we went on. We did our own personal survey because we know sometimes you get a survey from a company, you got to make sure that your data is reflecting some of the data that that company is reflecting. So we decided to do our own um, survey with our student. And with the survey with the student, we asked some questions, and I just highlighted um, some of the ones that I thought was very interesting. Um, these are the students' words. We did not change them at all. We typed them exactly as the survey what they put in. I learned how to speak with a purpose. I experienced how to value and how to work hard to one day be the man and the father I was created to be. I love the experience of being from the heart. It made me feel at home and comfortable. It also is a good way of teaching me new things that I don't know and to help me get ready for my future. My experience with From the Heart, it was good. I really liked it. I can open up to her and express my feelings. I really liked, I liked it. We got to tell more about ourselves. I can express my feelings more. I can open up more. I also like the advice that was given to me because I actually take it in and I use it. I've had the experience, I've, I've had a great experience so far. From the heart gives me a lot of motivation to get through my classes and my school. So you can read some of the other comments that the students said. And not everything is measured in a test score, that sometimes you have to see how kids feel about our program as part. Also, this is also the results that came from their survey. So their survey results, my survey results first, this is the survey result that they gave to students. As a result of the workshop, the data included students believe that they were able to think more critically, better at resolving conflict, more confident learners, and better communicators. Students also report believing that they had more of an appreciation for their right to feel, of feeling, more of the appreciation for others' right to feeling, the ability to articulate their feelings more effectively, and understanding that they can only control how and what they feel. And finally, the students reported believing that they were more productive and positive, and they were more successful. And then there was a scale from one to five, and I took these two off the report. Overall, I'm glad I participated in this positive learning course, which is 4.3 out of a scale of five. And given an opportunity, I would like to participate in similarly program for this from the heart next year, which is 4.3. And that was out of a scale of five. And we had an assembly at an end. I do have a little video here of some testimonial from the kids but we were using our iPhone, so it's not very loud, but if you'd like for me to try to play it to see if you can hear it. But I have a couple of these and it's not too loud, so. They made us think about more about life after high school, after what we wanted to do, how to handle ourselves, certain things we do once we go to college, want to go to college, or you don't have to go to college, but you still make a plan. And we had quite a few kids to do testimonial, but we brought one for you to listen to tonight. So, and then we, at the end, we had a, a, a ceremony where all the kids came together. They were recognized. They received certificates for completing the program as well. And these are just a few of the pictures of the event that we had at the end. And here's a report. If you have a link there, you can read all of the data that was given to them. If you want to read it, it's right there for you to see, all of the, the data report. And what do we plan to do next year with this proposal if the, um, if the contract is approved? We would like to re-invite those that were in the program last year, 
that finished the 24%. We'd like to in add some incoming freshmen. We will use some of the same criteria that we used last year for identifying the students, and we hope to keep the participation rate around 120 students. Any questions? Questions, board members? Carol, we, we do not have what you shared with us tonight in our board book, so would you mind sending that to Alex, and that way she could load it in there for us so that we can kind of go back through. Oh, sure. And That's look at the report. Thank mm -hmm. you. You're welcome. And Carol, thank you for providing all of that supporting information because that's one of the key pieces that we often find ourselves missing when schools are coming to us and they're asking to be allowed to use funds for programs like this. So thank you very much because I was on the same page with Ms. Campbell there mm -hmm. earlier. Um, real quick question. Would you be taking away from the effectiveness of the program if you expanded your numbers this year? Is that too early or is that something you're thinking about doing in the future? Well, Fund the Heart is a part of our SIG grant. Okay. And it's a part of our SIG grant and it's only a piece of money that we use. And so that's why it's only $60,000 yes, and man. we can only um, serve that many students okay. with that amount of money. Because with our SIG grant, you know, we use mostly for coaching, mm -hmm. that we have coaches from um, ISA that comes in. And so that's a piece of money that we decided that we could use with our social emotional piece of helping our students from this company that's called From the Heart. Good, thank you. I look forward to even better results next year. Thank you. And in our building, we know we don't talk about anything unless it's data. Yes, ma'am. Everything is data driven. And I have seen her data room. She believes in data. Can I ask one other thing? Sure. Is there an extension into the rest of the school from some of the learning that's taking place in, with these students? Yes, um, we, as you mean, as what else is going on? We so, are, so I'm hoping that whatever is taking place with these students, that there's that social emotional learning is going out into the building as a whole. Yeah, not only that, with Pam around the data that we have, we use that data, we have developed something called a, a pride pride time and in that pride time we address some of the social emotional learning parts that we take from the playbook and so we're using all of that as part of the resources that are given because as we know when we educate students and we're looking for students we got to look at the whole child so we got to look at more than one way to meet them and so we're looking at all of those resources that are provided with us provided to us to expand that you're welcome any more questions I just want to um, compliment Dr. Montague Davis. She's talked about the great job, but in fact, she has really done the district and the students a huge favor by going someplace she loves. It's been a really banner year for you. Um, when you speak of data, the, the state monitors who come in and monitor these SIG grants have been trying to get Carol's prototypes for how she's collected data because she's done a better job than anybody else and they <laughs> want to take them around the state. The other comment that I wanted to make about this because Ms. Campbell raises a really good point. Mm -hmm. We've been working hard with people. Um, the CT3 uh, presentation you all saw in June was another good example of bringing the data back to show something works. But with the federal SIG grants, the schools also have certain vendors that are pre-approved. Pre so they don't also have a choice to just go out and pick. Um, in the old days with the SIG grants, you had a lot more flexibility. Now the feds tell us, you know, here are the models you can use and the vendors you can use. So you do have a little bit of choice, but um, I just think it's helpful for all of us to remember it's not like you just get to pick. Right. Um, whoever you want once you get the grant. So I really appreciate all you've done. And um, the, the data wall at Carver is really impressive. I know most of our board's been over there to see it, but if, you, um, if you're in that area and want to see, we don't have that many high schools that, um, we have a lot of elementary and middle schools with data walls, but not many high schools, and it's really impressive. So and you're going to be really impressed with it this year. Oh. <laughs> Okay. okay, thank you so much, we'll and thank visit. you for providing, Mr. Johnson. I guess I just want to thank Carol. Um, I think by 1985, we brought Carver back as a high school, and Sarah Lee saw the fit to adopt Carver as one of the adopted schools. There's two adopted schools in the United States 
one in New York and one here in Winston-Salem. And the purpose of that was to bring money in and bring people in that had a lot of uh, things to help Carver with. So Carver has come from a, a middle class school down, and we're trying to bring Carver back up because a lot of the middle class families that are living there don't have any children in the school. So, which means that you got a lot of kids that are coming in there that don't have that money that is needed to keep a school afloat. So, if you've got some contributions, which every time I see Carol, she's begging. <laughs> so, we need to put some money back in Carver to help Carol to carry out some of these programs. They just don't come by just being there. We need money to move these programs out and to help these children. Thank you, Carol. Thank you, Mr. Johnson, but I don't call it begging. I call it working for my students. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Appreciate it. Hey, Carol, I, I have a question for you. So when you, when you had these kids from the beginning of the program to the end, you saw where their attendance got better, mm -hmm. um, less discipline referrals, et cetera. Is that correct? Well, what I saw was I saw some kids who wouldn't open up to some of the staff members that began to open up to some of the advisors that came into the program. And they were so good about having um, a person that was more at their age at high school that the kids felt, especially the young ladies, felt um, able to open up to. Now, the owner of the company felt so um, involved in Carver, he came and did the mail session himself. When he left, he had made connections with five of my boys who are athletes, that he has those type of connections out there, that he gave his personal information for them to reach out to them to help them work further. So I saw not only in the school making a difference, I saw him taking a personal interest in some of our students to make them better as they move on with more support there. So the answer to that, yes, I saw some guys that was in a little bit of making some, um, sometimes we all make bad choices, making some choices that they began to channel their behavior. More questions for Carol? Or Mr. Johnson can give another plug. Carol will be happy for that. I will be more than happy for that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> okay, Vice Chairman Barr, Finance Committee report. Okay, in Finance Committee, we discussed our policy 4141, which deals with the salary schedules. And then discussion on physical year 2017, 2018, and status of closing out the year. We discussed our physical year 2018, 2019 budget. And finance is working on getting a snapshot um, ready of where the budget is for 2018, 2019 uh, for our September meeting. And then discussion on all employees and, and salaries. Thank you. Uh, building and Grounds Committee report, Ms. Lida Calvert-Hayes. Well, I think Daryl kind of stole my show. I was going to tell about all that we had coming up and all, but he got there before I did, so I'll make mine short and sweet. Uh, we did talk about the MWBE uh, bond, and this is the local bond, what is going on right now. And... Uh, as you know, MWBE stands for, this is for people that aren't in construction, Minority Women Business Enterprise. And right now, um, what we're doing in, <clears throat> in our new bond, we have 31.2% of MWBE participation, which is much higher than what we've normally had. Uh, we also look at local contractors. Who do we have in this area that's going to spend money in the area rather than have somebody from Timbuktu that's going to take off with the money and go back to where they came from? We try to hire local contractors. And we do have right now 84.3% uh, of money spent with local contractors in the area. One thing I wanted us to do, and I did ask Daryl about this, let's break this out. I want to know what percentage we actually have of minority businesses versus Caucasian 
white businesses. So, uh, and that's with women, only with women. So we will get a breakdown of that. We'll see where we are, but we are really ahead of where we've been on our other projects, so that's good. If you know an MWBE company, make sure they're registered. Make sure they're registered with the school system. And I do want to let everybody know that I am an MWBE company, but I do no work. And I've had people ask me, no work for the school system. It is a conflict of interest. So get your friends out there, ones that can take advantage of this opportunity and uh, get them to start putting out bids and, and getting a piece of the pie. Uh, also, we talked about Philo Hill. We talked about what can we do, especially with parents, to make kids want to be at Philo Hill. And so we put out a survey to the parents of what they think is needed at Philo Hill. How can we encourage kids to want to be at Philo Hill, to want to learn at Philo Hill. What do the parents feel like we can do to entice Philo Hill to even be a better school? So that's going to be interesting. It'll be an interesting report hearing back from the parents as to how they feel we can make Philo Hill an even better school. So there is a survey out to the parents. If you know any of the parents that have kids that follow Hill, make sure that they're filling this out because that is a good way for, for us to learn more about what is needed at Fallow Hill. Um, we talked also about um, the right of entry to KIWS LLC, and I know you wonder what in the world is that. I even wondered it myself. But that's adding piping to existing wells. So we had a discussion on what we were doing with that also. And we also talked about the Sonova Solution Contract. And what that is, that is talking about tablets that have been put on our buses. And I do believe that that is just about completed also uh, now. Now, another thing that was really, really interesting to me is the naming of the Robin Hood School. And there is a preliminary discussion that will be uh, discussed about naming rights and a process that will be uh, gone through pertaining to naming, and that happens with all our schools. But that is something that will be going on about the Robin Hood Road School. So we've had busy, a busy, busy business and grounds. Um, and if you get a chance, and you can, go down Thurman Street, I say this every time, look at the big cranes, you'll be very, very, I think, impressed with the achievement that is going on there, and uh, hopefully the rain has stopped, and we'll be able to move forward in a quicker manner. Thank you. Thank you. That concludes our discussion items for this evening. Board will move into our action items. Um, first, consider approval of the lease amendment for WFU Centers for Exceptional Children. Do I have a motion to approve? Move to approve. Ms. Montsinger, do I have a second? Yeah. Mr. Johnson, do you have any discussion? All in favor? Motion carries. Next, consider approval of From the Heart contract for Carver High School. Do I have a motion to approve? Ms. Taylor, do I have a second? Mr. Singletary, any comments, questions? All in favor? Motion carries. Consider approval of right of entry for KIWS LLC. Do I have a motion to approve? Second. Ms. Calvert Hayes, do I have a second? Mr. Singletary, any discussion? All in favor? Motion carries. Consider approval of contract amendment for Synovia Solutions. Do I have a motion to approve? So Ms. Taylor, second Mr. Johnson. Do I have any discussion? All in favor? Motion carries. And we added um, item E will be consider approval of policy 4141. Do I have a motion to approve? So Mr. Barr, second. Mr. Singletary, any discussion? All in favor? Motion carries. That can includes our action items for this evening. We have two items on our consent agenda, approval of meeting minutes for the June 26, 2018 meeting, 
in con, um, approval of the general personnel report. Do I have a motion to approve the consent agenda? Mr. Singletary, do I have a second? Mr. Johnson, all in favor? Motion carries. That brings us to public comments. So we have six individuals. <laughs> Thank you for joining us on Your School Channel, Cable 2.